what's up guys my name is techno but here for troubleshoot and today i'm doing a video on how to allow a server through your local firewall and go ahead and port forward it to your computer what does this mean well it simply means that your friends outside of your local network can connect to a minecraft server that you're hosting on your pc this video will work throughout the ages it's not limited to the current 1.15 update it will in fact work for the rest of the future updates until minecraft changes something drastic and of course, this will work retroactively, so if you're not planning on hosting a 1.15 server, 1.16 server, it will work for all of the previous versions as well. So, what exactly do we need to do to port forward? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we have our server installed and ready to use. Of course, once you have that done, we'll simply open up server.properties and we'll look down at the bottom for server-port. This is the port that people will use to connect it to your Minecraft server, whether they're on the same local network or outside of it. This is the port that we need to port forward and allow through our Windows or Antiviruses firewall. So, how exactly do we do that? Well, first of all, I'll simply select 25565, which is the default, and I'll Control c to copy it. Then I'll minimize out of both of them, press Start, and type in Firewall. Then I'll go ahead and click on Windows Defender Firewall. And of course, if you see this message over here saying these settings are being managed by a vendor application, followed by your antivirus or firewall software name, you'll need to go ahead and allow this port in the whitelist over there. Because there's so many different antiviruses and firewall software, I won't be demonstrating this here, and you can go ahead and skip forward in the tutorial while Googling for how to do it for your specific firewall or antivirus. Of course, if you don't have this message over here, or your antivirus or firewall works with the Windows Defender firewall settings, then all we need to do is click on Advanced Settings, close out of the window that we had open previously when the new one opens. So of course, this will be the same for an antivirus firewall program or the Windows Defender firewall. All we're going to do is allow port 25565 through TCP and UDP, both inbound and outbound. So to begin, let's allow it through inbound. So in the top left, we'll click inbound and in the top right, we'll click new rule. Then we'll go ahead and select port, next, TCP, specific local ports, and we'll paste in 25565. Note that I like to have this copied because we will be typing it in quite a lot. Next, allow the connection. Next, make sure all three of these are checked. Next, and we'll go ahead and give it a name. I'll call it MC Server. Then we'll go ahead and hit New Rule, Port, Next, UDP, and we'll paste in 25565. Next, allow, Next, all three of these checked. Next, and again, I'll name it MC Server. Note that you can have duplicate names here. Then we'll head into Outbound Rules, New Rule, Port, Next, TCP, 25565, Next, Allow the Connection, Next, all three of these checked, Next, and we'll give it a name, MC Server. And then once again, Port, Next, UDP, 25565, Next, Allow, Next, all three checked, Next, MC Server, and Finish. Now we're done allowing it through the Windows Firewall. Of course, if you're hosting it on a different port than 25565, then make sure to enter that instead of 25565. However, because that's the default and that's what my server is currently running, that's what I'll leave it as. Then we can close out of the Windows Defender Firewall, and now we get onto the fun part of port forwarding. So of course, because there are so many different kinds of routers and brands, this will be completely different for you and the next person. So, of course, I can't demonstrate something that will work on everything, but I can try my best. Over here, I've got a sample router created on my own website that does nothing, but it demonstrates how to set this up properly on your own router. So, you'll need to find your way across to port forwarding or some sort of port management so that you can see external port, internal port, protocol, something to do with local IP, and possibly an enabled checkbox. Basically, all we need to do from here is go ahead and enter the port under external, internal, and set the protocol to be TCP and UDP. Of course, if you don't have the option for two of these, you'll add one as TCP and one as UDP. If external and internal ports are asking for a range, i.e. they have two text boxes, you'll go ahead and enter the same number in both of them, unless instructed otherwise. Then we're going to need our local IP. Now on different routers, this is different. On this one over here, it's only asking for the last one to three digits. Of course, yours might ask for the entire thing of 192.168.1 whatever, or whatever it is that you have. So all you need to do is hold down start and press R, and then type in CMD and hit enter. I'll then type in IP config, hit enter once again, and we'll look for the way that we connected to the internet. So my computer is currently connected through ethernet, 
So I'll go ahead and look for that. Once you've found it, you should also see IPv4 address right below it. Mine is currently 192.168.1.20. Note that this is your local IP and people outside of your local network will not be able to connect to your server using this address. That being said, all I need to do is enter the last few digits, which for me is 20. Then I'll hit add new and as you can see, it's added to the list. Once that's done, you may have to hit apply and save somewhere else, but we're basically done with port forwarding from this point. Now, of course, you won't be able to send this local address to people outside of your local network. You'll need your actual external or public IP to do that. So I'll open up a new tab, head across to Google and simply search, what is my IP? After doing that, you should see the very first result is your IP address. However, if you don't see this over here or you think it might be different, then click on any of the links below. But because I know that this is mine, I'll simply keep that in mind and send that to friends. What you'll do is you'll simply copy it and send it to your friends as such. However, if you know that the port is different from 25565, you'll put a colon followed by the port number. Of course, if it's default 25565, you don't need to enter this colon 25565 at all. You can simply send them your IP address and they can go ahead and connect to it. Anyways, that's about it. Once you've done that, you should be able to start up your Minecraft server using your run.bat or something similar, and you'll be able to join it using your Minecraft game. To connect to your own server on your local PC, you'll go ahead and hit add server or direct connect. And for server address, we'll enter either a local host, one word, or 127.0.0.1, as they both mean our own computer. Done. You'll see your server appear and you can go ahead and join it. Now, of course, this is the latest snapshot 20W06A with the new Nether Underground. And of course, if you're watching this video close to the 1.16 release or the snapshots for it, then if you're interested in setting up a server of this type or possibly any future one, make sure to check my channel and its playlists for information on how to do that. Of course, I'll have videos on setting up vanilla servers and craft bucket slash spigot servers as well. Anyways, that's about it. I hope this video helped you. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. And I'll see you all next time. Ciao.